So another warm welcome to John, who is joining us all the way from Wales, to share some of ministry, experience in forming studies, and the good work that you're doing through the Faith and Worship resource. So thank you for coming to be with us at Holy Hermits Online. And we've already mentioned a little bit about your background, the castle behind you, but I wonder if maybe you'd like to share about that a little bit more for those to listen on outside of our gathered space. Yeah, sure. Well, um, we live in Kidwelly, which is on the, the middle of the South Wales coast. Um, Wales is surrounded by uh, a coastal footpath, so you can actually walk all the way around it. Um, and we're kind of on a bit of that. Um, so it's a small town. We have a castle going back to 12th century. Um, uh, the, there is a, um, a, a quayside um, <clears throat> just down from the castle. And there we do bird watching. Um, we get lots of um, migratory birds coming in and they spend time with us. And then they say cheerio and they carry on elsewhere. Uh, so over a course of a year, over 100 species uh, of birds of all sorts. Um, you know, while we've been here, um, we've seen the introduction of egrets. Um, uh, things change with with nature uh we never had an egret now we've got little egrets big egrets cattle egrets they're all coming up from europe um and uh things change you know uh, so we're very close to the environment with a farm uh, across the road next door have chickens uh, so we're woken up to the sound of the cockerel um and um you know that's that's been a part of our lives we've lived uh, near the countryside for quite a long time uh, and certainly near the coast for uh, about 40 years so um, you know we we're drawn to the sea <laughs> uh, so that's that's kind of the environment in which we live Thanks. and I've been a local yeah I've been a local preacher for 24 years uh, in the Methodist church brilliant and that's a role as a lay preacher isn't it uh, yeah, I mean, Methodist, it, Methodism tends to have its ministers, deacons, which are slightly different to Anglican deacons. It's a missionary role. Um, our son-in-law is a, a deacon. He's doing a church plant, um, well, Church Without Walls, it's called, um, where he's just um, involved with the local community and meeting together. He has a cafe, creation cafe, uh, where people come and learn a bit about painting and they have a bit of a, a talk and a, a share afterwards. Um, so that kind of thing. And then below, say below that, but um, the Methodist Church relies quite heavily on, on local preachers who are um, quite often in a, in a circuit um, would be the main people delivering God's word to them. Fantastic. And that's you. So that obviously is a call that has been on your life for some mm -hmm. time. And living that out then in creating resources for study groups and small groups to get together and, and go through not only the church year and different seasons, but also delving into all sorts of areas. And we at Holy Hermits Online love your stuff. We have used a few in the past, A Glorious Whisper, um, last mm -hmm. year the, all, um, the Angels from the Realms of Glory study for Advent. And now we've just done all creatures or all God's creatures study for the season of creation. So love to hear from you what it's like to actually form a study material and what that's meant to you. Okay. So um, we used to have a Bible study in our, our church and we'd get resources by resources in. And we struggled to find things that we really liked. Um, certainly I struggled to find things we really liked because they tended to you tend to do a study and it would just say what does peter mean when he says this or what do you think about verse eight or, or things like that and, and i wanted proper discussion so um that's how it's kind of started um in that i wrote one i've no idea which one but um you know it, i've obviously been doing it a while because the, the last count i think there were 14 advent studies so i must have been doing it for at least 14 years um uh, and it kind of snowballed, you know, um, 
I'm, I'm currently thinking about, uh, about Lent now. So it, it gets very confusing at this time of year. So just before Advent, I'm starting to write Lent studies. And, um, you know, towards the end of summer, I'm writing Advent studies. And the, the, the year just gets mixed up to me. Um, but then um, there are issues then about, well, I did this last year. What can I do this year? And uh, the same is true, even with general Bible studies. Um, so I can stick strictly to the Bible or I can look further afield. And um, I, I just come to conclusion. I do things that um, mean something to me and I enjoy the study, uh, the creation of them. Um, and then if other people like them, that's great. And um, yeah, yeah, I get quite good feedback. So I presume um, other people like the kind of studies where you, know, you get given more general questions and um, and hopefully they, they, you know, there's more than enough material to, um, to last a, a good hour, hour and a half. Um, I know we, we, we tend to sort of uh, pick and choose with questions when we do them because um, quite often you spend so much time on one that you think, ah, I'm not going to get all the way through. But that's fine. That's fine. And yeah. I like art as well, so I include art with them. Mm, yeah, that's something that we definitely appreciate as well in having a, a, a visual element. But as you mm. said, having so many um, questions as uh, offering then does provide opportunity for people to be able to choose their own adventure, as it were, with your materials. So mm -hmm. we certainly have had that experience in, in picking and choosing sometimes the questions, but also what we've most recently been trying out and others can even smile very broadly on the screen if they like this method or kind of give us a bit of a, hmm, yeah, that's okay. But we've actually been giving all the questions and saying, speak to whichever one you like. This is just a time of sharing and these are the stimulants. So I'm seeing a few smiles on screen. So that's obviously <laughs> all creatures. Thanks everyone for the feedback. But yeah, so that's been really beautiful for us. And obviously we've already talked about your ecology of where you are and have been inhabiting the space with the local wildlife as well as those who mm -hmm. have been out. But um, this most recent study, the All God's Creatures study, what was that like for you to put together? And, yeah, if you can share with us a little bit of what that was like. Um, well, um, I mean, it, it's part of, I think, looking at our relationship between, you know, God, us, and, in fact, I carry that forward to our neighbours as well. And, um, you know, um, there, there are studies or continuing amount of studies which sort of cover um those subjects as well but it was just um i th i mean i've done one on food as well in the bible and I, it, it started off just looking at the kind of animals that there are in in the bible and then um it progressed from there to um touching on climate change and and you know our care of god's creation and I just let it go where it leaves me in a sense so um, and, and it felt important to sort of give quite a few references that people could check up on at the end then um, I mean the only, the only other thing which I've done in more modern more recent studies is at the end I've, I've picked one particular image and um, uh, suggested a visio divina on that that which is a more detailed um, prayerful look at a a picture, which is a wonderful thing. We um, spent a Saturday last Saturday, in fact, um, looking at using such things in in worship, and um, it's, it it is amazing. You know, when you look at a picture really hard, a uh, particular piece of artwork, uh, and you you put yourself into it, and uh, see things that you never thought were there sometimes and uh it's, it's it's a great way of looking at art in a prayerful way so yeah so i've started doing that now as well so <laughs> these things these things change you know yeah it's an evolution and it sounds to me also as if it's a revolution of um going down the rabbit hole and seeing where god takes you oh absolutely absolutely so which is why in a sense i, I limited to, i think 
I, I quite like units of four or you know five for uh, for length, but um, because I think you, if you try and put it over too many, then people get a bit sort of weary of it. Um, I, I think if you can put slightly too much into four, then people can just read it themselves and um, do a bit of uh, thinking themselves. So yeah, so there we go. Good stuff. And thinking on the prayer then, you know, you were talking about Visio Divina and that being a prayerful exercise, the wealth and riches of your website, Faith and Worship, with all those Celtic prayers, some of them mm -hmm. forced and some of them written by you. Um, what's that been like to form that site and that body of beautiful work for sharing? Well, that, that kind of started off in a similar way to the Bible studies when I first became a local preacher, uh, finding prayers that I was happy using um, because we generally don't, although we do have um, uh, orders of worship, uh, I mean, I was brought up an Anglican, so I, I, I can still recite most of the uh, liturgies, but um, we don't tend to use the, the, the prayer books in our services. Um, people use resources that they, they have uh, for their prayers. Um, and again, I, I couldn't find quite what I wanted. Um, I've been interested in poetry uh, for many years since a child. So I, um, I started writing my own. And then I started looking at the history of prayer in the early church. And that led me to um, the idea of, of um, what's generally thought of as Celtic Christianity uh, or spirituality. Um, with you know St Patrick and and uh, the various um, saints, and um, that's kind of influenced me because um, Celtic spirituality is, is is about God in everything, um, and um, you know which is reflected really in our in our opening prayer. There uh, we see we glimpse something of God in in. In everything, you know, the, the wonderful butterflies and things like that, you know, the, the joy of a kangaroo and its baby, you know, uh, that brings joy to us, you know. Um, it didn't have to be like that. It could be a really boring thing, you know, but it, it happens the way it has. And, um, you know, nature is beautiful. And, um, you know, and I, and I think, you know, we see God through that. Uh, and that's, that's very much seems to me the, the, the essence of, of, what I think of as Celtic Christianity and spirituality, it's this, you know, God, God in a sense is all around us. You know, they have um, what goes like circle prayers where, where you know, you, you pray for, for God to, to encircle. Um, and um, I, it just seems, just seems right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's a good fit. And in what you were also alluding to in, in Celtic spirituality being wrapped up in the natural things that God has created with such beauty, um, you also have work in another field too with animals, don't you? You have the pet food business. Uh, yeah, I, I used to work for um, a local pet food, well, a national pet food company, which is based here. And um, I looked after the marketing and and um, developed their website and web shop. Um, so that kind of gave me a. Um, but then I left that um, because we needed help to look after uh, my mother as she was uh, coming to the end of her life and uh, with dementia. So uh, having left that, um, I needed a little bit of income and something of interest other than um, care. So um, having given a, a little bit of a break from, from that, I, I, I had contacts with the, with the factory and um, uh, they had a system in place where you could be um, just an online business. So I started that. It's, it's only very small, um, but it does help to support the other stuff. So um, that, that's fine. It, it doesn't take much time. Um, but it, it kind of makes enough to cover the the web costs of the uh, the faith and worship thing. Um, so yeah, yeah, keeps me busy. Yeah, 
And it seems in ministry these days we all tend to need a bit of a side hustle. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's fantastic. And do you have any pets of your own? That's also really important for us at Holy Hermits Online. We have our companion animal ministry. We're very big on bringing our animals, whether they be pets or companion animals of another kind, into our space. Do you have any mm. furry creatures or feathered creatures that share your home? Um we we had we've had dogs we uh we lost the last one um a few years back and and decided that we wouldn't start again from puppy uh or, or it was also around about the time that we we got a camper van so that uh, that just made life a little bit easier for us um so uh, yeah so we the, the last dog was a uh, toller uh, nova scotia do tolling retriever if anyone's seen one um which are gorgeous um and it, it just seemed uh a, 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 so sad to lose her but um uh we we thought we would draw the line there uh, so just fish in a pond in the garden i saw so if i brought those in they'd die so i can't do that <laughs> very good to leave them in the garden and we certainly appreciate what it means to sometimes have sabbath rest from care of creatures especially mm -hmm. after um pets or, or companion animals who have gone before and yeah that's been a big part of us as well we have created some memorial resources to mourn our companion animals within our community and we hope to expand that to offer that beyond so i wonder just maybe as a final question before we finish our little recorded segment and hop into dialogue um, what recommendations or advice could you give to our community for creating resources which are accessible to others in the wider church all around the world? Because, you know, we found you and we're based in Australia. You're based in Wales. This is fantastic. So, yeah, any advice you can give would be very welcome. Um, I, I, th I think it's, it's whatever you've got, basically. Um, I mean, I started off with just a few um, prayers and, and shared those. Um, I think I've probably shared, shared some things on local social media. Um, and then um, I had a very small uh, web presence where I, as I wrote them, I put them on. And it kind of grew as my interest grew. Then I thought, oh, um, I, I, I did a trawl of the internet for uh, Celtic prayers and uh, mopped up as many as I could that I could use and um, you know then started uh, adding some of my own as well and it, it just it grew <laughs> it's, it's, um, I, uh, I only know how much it grew when I had to make the website uh, mobile uh, usable and um, which basically meant recoding the whole site and then I realized it was a little bit on the big side um so uh yeah um and then it's just getting getting your presence on the web uh actually seen so you know and there are uh ways and means of just making it more visible mm. one of which is making it mobile friendly yeah. um but, no, it's, it's, yeah that was. <laughs> going from but, pre-mobile friendly to mobile friendly, that would have been a big undertaking. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly would like to commend you, and I know many others here have really appreciated a lot of the prayers that you have made accessible to the world. So a big thank you for that, and a big thank you for the resources you create for small groups, because we certainly have been benefiting for over two years now. And um, yeah, I, I certainly would love if we continue to collaborate with you across the seas and um, using mm -hmm. technology. So thank you so much for agreeing to come and visit us at Holy Hermits Online. And um, yeah, I might end the recording now so we can enter into dialogue with all those who are gathered in the space while we have you visiting. So thank you, John. Okay, lovely. Ready.